Hello and welcome to Eastwix Paper and Ink. My name is Katie and today we're going to be doing some ink blending. But first I'd like to say a big thank you to all my new subscribers. I'm so grateful to have you here and thankful that you took the time to subscribe to my channel. For those of you that are new here and not subscribed, I hope you take a second and hit that subscribe button. We're gonna have some fun things going on throughout the year, one of which is acrylic pouring for card making. I like to do uh, hand lettering, um, watercoloring, and things like that. So I hope you'll take a second, hit that subscribe button, and join us. And on that note, there is a question that I have for all of you. What would you like to see in the new decade, what brings you to YouTube? What type of videos do you like to watch? Do you like acrylic pouring? Would you like to learn how to incorporate that into your card making or other type of crafting? I use my acrylic pours to make bullet journals. If you check me out at Eastwix Paper and Ink over on Instagram, you can see um, a couple of photos that I took uh, and that I use my cinch to make some bullet journals. Does that interest you? Do you like haul videos? Do you like watercoloring? Do you like hand lettering, calligraphy, things like that? Do you like live videos? Would you want to partake in a live video? If you would, let me know what your time zone is. What time of day works best for you to do live videos? Anything you can think of that you might like to see in the new decade, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you would like to see so that I can try and incorporate that into some videos, maybe some series that we can all kind of hang out together and either practice or, you know, just, you know, have new ideas that, that we can play around with. So let me know in the comments below, any ideas that you'd like to see in 2020, let me know. And with that being said, we're going to get started with the video. So the products I'm using today are some Distress Ink, uh, I've got Picked Raspberry, Spun Sugar, and Wilted Violet. I've got some makeup brushes. I've got um, the mini foam blending tools from Ranger. And I've got the new domed um, applicators, the, dome, the foam blending applicators from scrapbook.com that I thought we should try out. And I'm also going to be using a um, craft mat. I'm using the Tim Holtz one. You can use whatever one you want. Um, I like the mini one because it doesn't take up a ton of space and it's perfect size for blending on small cardstock. The other thing that I'm doing or I'm going to be using is some hot pressed watercolor paper. This is Arches 100% cotton. I'm going to be using the Fabriano Studio watercolor paper. This is hot pressed also, but it's only 25% cotton. So it is a student grade. It's a little bit different. And then of course, we're going to the Old Faithful with the Bristol Smooth from Strathmore. Now, the reason that I wanted to do this video was because I watch a ton of videos and I, I'm a, a YouTube junkie. I call it YouTube University. There's tons of things that we can learn on YouTube. I think it's a fantastic tool. And one of the things that I watch tons and tons of crafting videos. And one of the things that I haven't seen, and I could be wrong, it could be out there and I just haven't come across it, is a, com a, a direct comparison to all of these tools. You know, we've got these makeup brushes. Uh, I don't have the life-changing makeup brushes, you know, blender brushes. I don't think they're all that different from, you know, these makeup brushes. So I won't invest in those. Um, but then we have the new domed applicator, foam applicator from scrapbook.com. And of course we got the old faithful mini ink blending tool, the round mini ink blending tool. And so I've never seen, I've always seen an individual, I've always seen, oh, here's the new makeup brush or, you know, here's the new uh, blender brush, life-changing brush, and this is what it looks like. You know, I've seen the foam applicator and, you know, the dome and, and you know, this is what it looks like and, oh, it's great, it's great. But I wanna see the, I wanna see a direct comparison and hopefully you guys do too. So that's what we're gonna be doing today, but we're also gonna test out the different papers. You know, I said Bristol Smooth's Old Faithful as well. It's the go-to for be beginner um, 
or people who struggle rather with ink blending uh, because of its its coated surface it makes ink blending a lot easier but i've also seen people using watercolor paper hot press watercolor paper because it's smooth and so i thought you know while we're testing these out we might as well test the papers out and see what happens so that's what we're going to do today so the first uh, paper we're going to start with is the arches hot pressed watercolor paper um, I'm really interested. I've seen, you know, a couple of people using it on YouTube and the really, the color is just the way it lays down on it is absolutely stunning. So I thought I would give it a whirl and see, see what we can do here and see how it looks. So the first one that I'm going to do first tool is we're going to use the foam blending tool, the mini foam blending tool. And I'm going to do this panel in real time. And then for the, all the rest of the panels, I'm going to speed up the video. So we're going to start with sponge sugar. And if you um, struggle with holding your paper down, one thing that I've found is if I hook my thumb, you can't see it really, but I hooked my thumb to the edge of the desk and I just, and I'm able to give more stability and pressure on my fingertips here to hold that in place. So that's just one, one layer of color. That's pretty good. That's really nice. It blended really easily. And so now we're gonna put our second layer down and I apologize if the camera's shaking a little bit. I use an Archon mount for my phone, and so that's on my desk. It's, I don't have a, I need to get some extra little bits to stick it out farther so I can put it on a table opposite my desk so that we don't have the shakes. Okay, so that's two layers of color. Now we're gonna go in with the picked raspberry. Get my microfiber towel. We're going to wipe our mat down here. And I keep my towel strategic so that I don't have glare. You can see my tea mug over here that kind of blocking the view a little bit from the so I don't have a glare on my desk. I do have a glass desk and I put my crafting mat um, with the grids underneath so that. I can have this solid surface. So you don't have to use a crafting mat if you don't want to. You can just use a glass surface. It's totally fine. Now, for people who struggle with ink blending, you might be wondering, well, why would I want to even attempt to use watercolor paper? Well, you may not want to. Um, but I'm no blending expert, so you can see this is real time. I'm not speeding this part of the video up. But here's one thing that I'll say. You see how I'm doing? I'll try and slow it down. I'm doing like a figure eight, okay? And the faster you go, the easier that it will blend. Okay, so you don't want to go slow motion. That was just, in fact, I'll do it over here. If you do an infinity or figure eight symbol, okay? you will have a much easier time blending, I promise you. No matter what card panel you use, what type of paper that you use. And if you think of ink blending like uh, painting, painting a wall in your house, you have to feather it out. So you just, you know, you, you want to have a some type of technique that can can feather, feather your ink in. Now, move this. Actually, I should switch that over. And I'm just using a piece of release paper. Um, you can use a piece of tape or whatever, but I can't, I struggle with that. Um, now you see here, by doing that figure eight motion, it really, helps with the gradient. It softens, it feathers everything in, and you don't have harsh lines. Now this could very well be the paper. We'll find out. But um, 
But if you just do that and don't be afraid to apply pressure, when you get ink splotches, you know, where you maybe you've dropped the tool or, you know, or something, don't be afraid. Don't add more ink. Just apply more pressure. That's what I found that if I apply more pressure, then more times than not, I can get that out. I can, I can blend that ink out. And, you know, you might have a, a darker edge, but it will blend out. Okay, so just figure eights. So again, ink blending is like, you know, painting on your wall. You know, you, you cut in and you feather it out so that when you roll it, everything blends seamlessly. It doesn't, you don't have these harsh lines. Okay, so you just, you know, figure eight might not be a technique that you can do or, you know, what have you, but it is something to try, a, 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 a motion that you can do to be able to blend in those inks. You can see I had some harsh lines there, but I'm applying pressure. I'm really pushing this applicator onto you know, you can kind of see it there where it's squished down. I'm really applying pressure. So don't be afraid to apply pressure. Okay, now, and the, you know, when I have to come back through, I always add a little bit of ink to the, the applicator because I just, I don't want it to be dry. I want to have a little bit of moisture to, to add in because I don't see, you can see that splotch there, but we're gonna, well, you might not be able to, but I pushed it down. I'll lift this up because the screen looks a little wonky there on the, clean this up. And you can see, I'll try to bring it up a little closer. Everything blended perfectly. So that's one panel. Put a little post-it on the back here. And we'll set that off. Okay, so our next tool that we're gonna use is the dome applicator. Now, I did this already because I had filmed this video and I had to do it again because I lost the footage, it deleted off my phone. So I have done this before, um, but I thought it was worth refilming and doing this again because I think it, I personally think it will be beneficial and helpful to some people who may struggle with ink blending or are curious about the types of tools and the effects and the types of paper that that you can use. So I am going to move on to the next piece. We're still on the arches. I'm going to stop the video, restart it because we're going to we're going to um speed up the video at this point and I'll switch over to a voiceover. So I cut out sections of the video. So each portion of the video shows um, one panel with the mini foam blending tool, one with the dome and one with the makeup brush to take out some of the video. This video is super long. And so I apologize for that, but there really wasn't a whole lot I could do about it. So if you want to speed up through the, the video and go to the next section where I do the panel comparison, all the panels are complete and we do a side by side and I talk about what I like, what I don't like, then you can forward through to 16 minutes and 38 seconds. That's going to go to that section of the panel comparison. Um, if you want to go through that 
and get to the review of the dome blending tool, then you want to go to 31 minutes 56 seconds. I will put that time, those timestamps in the description box below so that you have something to reference. If you were to come back and watch the video to hear, you know, want to want to hear again my comparison and uh, review of the dome blending tool and the panel comparison. So we're doing we're on the makeup brush now, and this is on the Bristol Smooth. So I just did each panel cardstock so that you can at least see them in action and see some of the differences. Um, links will be in the description box below for the products that I use today. Um, affiliate links will be there as well. Uh, if you click on an affiliate link then and you make a purchase, that's the big thing, if you make a purchase, uh, I do earn a small commission on that that I will use towards videos for this channel. Um, you don't have to make a per you don't you don't have to use the affiliate links. I greatly appreciate it if you did, um, but again, you don't have to. And I just want you to know what the that money will go to is to provide content for you guys um, to make this channel more of what you want and what you're looking for. So we're almost done with the ink blending. We're finishing up that panel, and then we're going to go on to the comparison, side-by-side -side comparison. So one of the things that um, I want to go through each one uh, with the tool and the paper and some of the things that I've noticed. So we'll start with the arches. Um, I thought that the color went down really, really nicely. Um, with the mini tool, I thought that it blended a little bit easier um, smoother I guess is a better you know you can see some of the since we're comparing a foam tool to a foam tool with these two you can see some of the a little bit more of the texture in this panel with the dome tool than you can with the regular foam blending tool and then of course this is the makeup brushes and I'm just I'm looking at it you can if looking close to the paper you can see the fibers kind of lifted up from the blending but no big deal but it's so light and ethereal and dreamy and cotton candy like um, I really like how those panels turned out now with the student grade hot press, it's not 100% cotton, it's 25% cotton. I thought it did really good also. Um, you see a little bit more of the texture compared to, let's see if I can get up closer just so you can see some of that. You have a little bit more texture in the Fabriano, just want to make sure, versus the arches, but it's still it's still good. I mean, for being hot pressed, um, you know, as, a, as an option, if you can't get arches and the, the dome tool that was the same thing. I think one thing I've noticed with the dome tool is the color payoff is a lot stronger. You get much more color concentration with less ink, really. Um, I'm sure you noticed that there was a few of these that I didn't need to necessarily add a second color, you know, a second, you know, coat of color, uh, because the lay down was so strong. Now this was with the makeup brush and I had popped it up at the end when I was done with it, but this, you can see the texture. I'll try to bring it up. You can see, take that post-it off for a second so it doesn't affect you can see you can see that texture where you don't have it as strongly you know you do have a little bit with the foam blending you know the mini tool as well as the domed but it's not as significant so depending on the look you know that you're going for that may be exactly what you want now, 
Bristol Smooth. Everybody, you know, uses Bristol Smooth. So it's really, really popular. The downside to Bristol Smooth is that because it has that coating on, and you can see it in, in some of these, and I pointed it out specifically in the last one with the brushes that I did. Now, when I would take a little second during the video, you know, in between blends, I would spritz some alcohol on my fingers um, and wipe them off to get excess ink off. And I had done it right before I did this panel, and it still has all those fingerprints. Sorry for the shakes, guys. So the thing about Bristol Smooth is because it has that coating, it takes time to absorb in and dry and do its thing. So the downside to it is you have to be very careful about where you're putting your fingertips, making sure you're using something to cover uh, your fingers so that I can't use tape because my fingers are not even. So inevitably my middle finger is always over the tape uh, or the if I move it up, then I've got the back side, you know, I just, so I just use a piece of release paper. This is from a piece of stick it. And um, I probably need to switch that over since the color's transferring on it. But um, that gives me enough room to have my fingers to where it's not in the way. Now, I don't know it, it really, it comes down to your preference and what you're after when it comes to your ink blending. Now, I'm gonna show you these other panels. These ones I did yesterday, and that way you can see a comparison. So this is the Arches with the Mini Tool from yesterday. So it's had time to dry, the color's a little bit softer. Um, I really like how the arches worked with ink blending. If you are looking for something other than Bristol Smooth, you could totally get away with the arches 100% cotton hot pressed watercolor paper to blend on. That gives you two comparisons. It's obviously still wet, it's gotta dry and absorb in. Um, and this one is with the foam tool. This is today's, this was yesterday's, yeah. Um, I, I just, I really like how the color turned out on these. And the thing is, is that, um, and this is with the makeup brush. This was yesterday's, this is today's. What I found with the dome tool is you get a much stronger color payoff. So if you look at this column here, this is all the dome tool, this is all the mini, and this is all the makeup brush, okay? So you can see the color is a lot stronger. I mean, you know, it, it's stronger on the arches too, but when you compare it to yesterday's, it's still, it's gonna dry back a little bit this is yesterday's, it's just a much stronger concentration of color. So if you're looking for that deeper saturation of color, I would do, I would absolutely use the foam blending, the dome, excuse me, the dome foam, foam blending tool. God, that's a lot to say. Um, if you want a softer, more ethereal, dreamy look, blending brush, all the way, the make it, makeup brushes all the way. Um, I don't think you need to go spend, you know, 50 bucks on a set of brushes. Um, I think they're all pretty much the same. So, and again, I bought these at Walmart. You know, these are made by Royal Langnickel. They're the Moda. My Walmart doesn't have them anymore, but check the makeup section. They may have come out with different ones. Um, you could also, because you, you can see that the color, you know, payoff is very similar with the hot pressed Fabriano, um, and this is a comparison of the Fabriano hot press. This is yesterday's. This is today's. Very similar. 
So, and the same for the dome tool. So the color saturation, it, it, you know, depending on what you're wanting. And here's what I don't like about the Fabriano. And again, it depends on the look that you're going for. This could kind of be like a granite, you know, if you will, because it's got these lines and stuff in it. And I brought them up. So if I use the Fabriano hot pressed student grade watercolor paper that's only 25% cotton, I would not use a makeup brush with it because I don't want to see this. Um, it's it's really picking up the texture of the cardstock, which is okay. Again, it all depends on the look that you're after. Um, you know, will depend on what it is that that you want. If you want this the the textured look, you could even get this same look with the cold press watercolor paper. That's a t more textured paper. So you're gonna have more of this when you use a cold pressed watercolor paper. Now this is the um, Strathmore Bristol Smooth. And this is yesterday's, this is today's. And you can see on yesterday's, I've got you know some fingerprint pieces here. So you just, the th Bristol Smooth is great because it moves the color off. So if you make a mistake, because it's sitting on the surface, it allows you to blend it with another color to get it removed and and fix whatever mistakes you make, excuse me. Um, but what I don't like is that I've really gotta be careful. You know, you're working in ink, you're blending, you're doing this, you're doing that. It's hard to pay attention when you're ink blending and doing that type of technique to make sure that you don't, you're gonna have your fingers on your cardstock. I will say that, you know, holding down your paper or anything, it's stressful on the hand. So it takes a lot of strength to hold your papers down. So to have anything, whether it's a piece of tape or, you know, release paper or something, and I'm not even using the slick side, the slick side's on my fingers. Um, you know, the rougher side is what's on the paper to help grip it a little more. You know, I, I like the Bristle Smooth. I would use it um, if I had to, but I don't think that, you know, because of the, you know, and this is the mini, this is the dome, just to give you an idea. And this was the makeup brush. This could have been the panel too, you know, even though it's all from the same piece of paper, you know, things happen, you know, um, that can affect it. Um, so the tools come down and the paper comes down to what effect you want, okay? More so the tool, because as you can see, you're getting similar effects, you know, depending on, you know, the tool that you're getting with the exception of this one, you know, that Fabriano versus the arches. Um, I think I switched these out. This was yesterday's because I had got a little spot on that. Um, here's my thing. If I could only pick one paper to ink blend on, I would go with the Arches. 100% cotton, which leads me to, I have two other hot press watercolor papers that are 100% cotton. I have Fabriano Artistico and I have the Fluid 100, which is hot pressed and 100% um, cotton. Makes me want to test those out to see if I get the same effect. Um, and, or if I, you know, straight up got to use Arches 100% cotton hot press paper, or if I can use any hot press 100% cotton. If you want to see a video on that comparison, let me know in the comments below. What I like the most about that Arches paper is you can do anything. You know, now that I have a set of the domes, I've got the makeup brushes and I've got the minis, I can get any look. If I want the soft, dreamy look, I can. I know I can just pull out the arches, I can use my makeup brushes, and bam, I got this. And it's beautiful, okay? If I want a little bit deeper color saturation for a background, I'm gonna use the dome on there because it's just a much stronger color payoff. If I want 
a little, you know, it's it's strong color saturation. I'm not going to say that it's not compared to yesterday's. Yesterday's was was a little bit softer. So again, that's the amount of ink that you're putting on as well. Um, that I can go lighter with this, but still get a good gradient. Um, I I just this would be my go-to. But you can't go wrong with the hot press student grade that's not 100% cotton. The thing is, is that um, the Fabriano is the only place, the only thing I could find locally in like a Michaels or a um, Hobby Lobby. And I didn't check AC Moore. I need to check AC Moore to see if they have any hot pressed watercolor paper, but I don't think they do. But that's in store. So that's why I am I chose this to compare to because not everybody has a Blick store near them. Um, we have several art stores in the state of North Carolina, but they are north of me up in Raleigh and um, Greensboro, I think, and, and stuff like that. So if you can get to an art store, you can you have a plethora of you know hot press watercolor papers that you could try out. Um, I tried to keep this to where if you wanted to go local. Okay, sorry about that. My low battery popped up. So the point is, is that there's at least a place you can get some hot press watercolor paper so you can try these out yourself with the tools that you have and see if you like the results based on your color palette and things like that. Um, I think that there's a place for the tools. Do I think that you need to go through and replace every dome, you know, foam, mini foam blending tool with a dome one? No, but I will say this. So remember in the beginning, I told you to, when you're struggling with ink blending and you've got like, you know, dark spots and you need to get them out, that you want to apply more pressure, firmer, faster, okay? that's that's what you want to do you want and and that figure eight motion you know practice it because that will help you to get the feathered blended look and 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 less harsh lines as you're transitioning but the thing i noticed about and i showed it in the beginning is that it's got this extra thing here it's like a really hard piece of foam okay and of course you have you know the dome that comes out here. Now, the thing I noticed about these is that it makes it firm. So that firmness that I was telling you to push down on the blending tool, don't be afraid to push. If you don't want to get these and you have just the regular mini, you know, flat ones, apply pressure. That is what's going to help you to smooth everything out and not have those harsh lines, okay? So having what they did here by adding this makes it firm. In fact, I found that I had more strain in my hand, you know, with blending because it doesn't wanna let you put that pressure on, okay? So it's up to you. It, if, if you struggle with ink blending or, you know, you can't, your maybe your hand hurts with these other ones. Um, mine, I didn't feel as fatigued with these only because it, it gives, you know, it gives. These don't, these don't, I don't want to bend it too much, but they don't give. And that's the design. That's the point is so that you can get that firmness without having to apply a ton of pressure, okay? Now, the other thing that as you're blending and you get up to, you know, we'll use these two lines. When you're blending, okay, and you're, you know, doing your figure eight, as you come up to the next color, that's when you want to lighten up a little bit, okay? And and you still want to be on that paper, but you don't want to be pressing firmly. You want to you want to lift it up. And so the thing with this too is that because it's firm, it 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 puts that pressure on the paper, but then as you lift it up, you're just getting this it's kissing the paper. So it allows it to feather out. I mean, it's ingenious what they did. Um, 
I hope this helps people to understand the real differences with these two tools, not just the fact that it's domed, because to be honest with you, I think that this could be flat and you'd still be okay. Um, the one thing too, it's because of this foam. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. I'll try to get it close and maybe angle it to the light. You see how it's kind of got that sheen, that little crystally look, the shimmer. This one does not. And you know, this is probably a bad color. Let me go get the purple one here. This one doesn't have that. Okay. It's more matte. Okay. This is more pearlescent. And I'm sure it's because of the density of the foam. This is more open cell. This is closed cell. And I am pretty confident that if that you they created this flat, that you could get the same effect. You keep this because of the firmness. This keeps it firm, okay? But again, what helps I think too and why, you know, doming it like this, it helps when you get and you have to lighten your hand to get these two to mix better together and you, you know, soften, you feather in that harsh line. So if you're on the fence, if you, you know, you, you, you wondered if you should get these, I think it's worth a try um, for you to be able to use and compare and see. Again, you're going to get totally different results, you know what I mean, based on the tool. So that's really what it comes down to is what results are you looking for for the particular project that you're doing. You know, do you want a stronger color payoff or do you want a more, a, you know, a softer, you know, look, which is where your makeup brushes are going to come in. And, and you can see it, you know, on each column that they all do something a little bit different. And so to me, the tool depends on the project and the cardstock is your preference. Um, I think I'll, I'll probably use my arches for ink blending like I said just because I like that I can use it and get different results depending on the tool that I'm using so that's going to do it for me today guys I hope you liked the video I hope you found some value in it and some tips and tricks that you can take forward in your ink blending please let me know in the comments below what you think don't forget to like share comment and subscribe Thanks again for joining me today, and I hope you have a fantastic day. I'll catch you in the next video.
So that's going to wrap it up, guys. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you found some value in this and some tips and tricks for you to try with your ink blending. Please let me know in the comments below what you think. And I hope you join me for the next video. We're going to be playing along with Team Tiny. Hashtag Team Tiny again. And I'll catch you in the next video. Have a fantastic day.